Today we're talking about all the things you can do in all this downtime we have. I'm not going to be underplaying where we are in this situation at the moment, but I'm going to try and bring a little bit of a positive spin to it. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new, and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. I am super happy to be back with you, and I am going to be completely upbeat today. We're in tough times. It's there is no <laughs> there is no sugarcoating how challenging this all is to everybody. And I am no different. My business is no different. We are a business that relies on July and August reservations. If those reservations don't come, we don't have a second chance until next year. We may pick up a few in September and October and a smattering of them around the Christmas period and winter. But if we, you know, we make our money in July and August. And it came home to me a couple of days ago. My business partner said, do you know this, we could, worst case scenario, lose our entire summer. This essentially means if we don't do some things now, there will be no business next year. We, we, have, we have, fortunately, we have some good cash behind us. And something that we've always, always done is ensured that at this particular time of year, when we get into March, you know, this is, this is the doldrums for us. We've, we've, had July and August last year, we paid out dividends, we've, we're managing everything through the year, but we've always made sure we have a good supply of cash on hand as we enter a new season because you never know what's going to happen. So fortunately, we, we are in an okay position. That's not to say that I'm not running around like a headless chicken um, thinking what could possibly happen. But you know, we can't we can hear from people about how awful this is and what governments are doing wrong and what governments are doing right and and weigh up and balance all these different perspectives but you know folks this thing is moving like a juggernaut and we all we can do really is be proactive about what we have when this is all over. And it will be all over at some point. I don't want to come out of this at the end and go, oh my gosh, I wish I'd used that time more productively. You know, we had time, we had staff sitting there not doing as much as they, because they're not getting the reservations. And I don't want to come out saying, why didn't we do A, B, C, D? Why didn't we get all these projects done while we had the time to do them? So that's what I'm talking about today. Um, Because in times of uncertainty and anxiety, our natural instinct is to focus on the here and now. You know, we avoid looking ahead because there's no magic screen out there that's saying this is what life is going to be like in six months or a year. However, as I just mentioned, when we've got an enforced downtime, we've got choices. We can bemoan our fate. We can worry. We can catastrophize. My husband asked me this morning when I read this out and he said, is catastrophize an actual word? And I say, yes, it is an actual word. It's a, psycho- it's a word that we used in psychology years ago. Catastrophizing is something that, um, that I learned when I was doing my counselling training, is that people do tend to think about the worst that can possibly happen. So we can do all that. Or we can plan for recovery. We can think ahead and think about what it's going to be like in six months or a year's time when this is recovered. 
So in this episode, I've brought some suggestions from property managers and independent owners. Uh, I asked the question out on the Facebook group. And if you're not a member of the business of short-term rentals and property management Facebook group, I really encourage you to go over there because this is where the business, the, the real business owners are congregating and talking about, we're not talking about individual cancellations or ind- individual gripes we have about renter, uh, renters, because they're still calling them renters, about guests and home away or Airbnb. That is not the, those are not the topics of discussion. The topics of discussion are more based around um, strategies and operational suggestions and things that we can all do to support each other in this time. So I really encourage you to go there. So I did put a note out on that group and said, if you have any suggestions on what I should talk about in this episode, please let me know. You know, let's look at projects, the things that we can get going now that are going to serve as well in the future when we come back from this disaster. So I'm going to go through some of these and you can pick and choose. There was also a great article from our friends at Touch Stay recently on a very similar uh, similar topic. I deliberately haven't looked at that because I didn't want to bring those suggestions into this. I mean, that's, that's Touch Day's suggestions and they are, they are exceptionally good. We might overlap on a bit, but uh, certainly at the end of this, go back and have a look at those, uh, that Touch Day article as well. So I'm going to kick off with the first thing that came up in the Facebook group was, you know, well, while we're in in this time when properties are empty, this is the time to get out and do the deep cleaning, the maintenance project projects and the safety inspections. And I immediately went into this. and I thought, absolutely, this is what we should be doing. And Betsy Labarge from Mount Hood Vacation Rentals suggested that Besides catching up with maintenance items and grounds work, we will be deep cleaning all homes during the next couple of weeks, which will include sanitizing the interior and exterior of all cabinets, closets, furniture, etc., laundering all homeowner linens, mattress covers, comforters and bedspreads, etc., cleaning upholstery, carpets and drapes. And Hilary Sky from Sky Luxury Rentals added window washing, Corking kitchens and bathrooms, that one's dear to my heart. Minor repairs, upgrades, upgrading pool tables and hot tubs and deep cleaning patios and decks. And this, these are all great ideas. And, and my immediate thought was, yes, that's exactly what we should be doing. We should be keeping all our cleaning staff occupied. And then Amy Gaster from Tybee Vacation Rentals came along with you know, a real voice of reason and said... That is adding an expense with no guarantee of revenue and it could actually hurt the business. And so I thought that was, that was a, a really great point that we've got to consider the bottom line. And I know we are. There's a, there's a finite uh, pool of cash in our business. And, you know, it, it costs us X amount to just keep the lights on. You know, I'm not going to get rid of the property management system monthly expense, which is huge, um, to the detriment of of other things. So you've got to look at, you know, what, what is coming in. I mean, maybe that's the first thing we should be doing is just look at your cash flow over the next uh, over the next 12 months. How can you manage? How can you manage if there is no business for a year? So before you go into to, to being altruistic about all your cleaning and maintenance staff, you've got to think, you know, what well, if I do all these things and if I spend this money, will I be afford, will, will my business be afloat in 12 months' time? So, I mean, certainly for, from, from my perspective, it's something that I'm encouraging all our homeowners to do um, because we don't employ cleaning staff ourselves. The majority of our homeowners um, handle their own cleaning through their own third party providers. So we're putting this back over to the owners and saying, this is a great time to be doing this. 
You know, use you, you go and use this downtime productively. Um, so that was a great point, Amy. Thank you um, for that. You know, she said um, is adding an expense with no guarantee of revenue. It could actually hurt the business. I don't think it's a good time to be stuck with bad debt. I'm trying to balance all the projects we too could be doing, but that is adding an expense with no guarantee of revenue and could actually hurt the business. So, so think, you know, definitely keep that in mind. You know, I know we want to keep all our staff um, in employment, but we've got to look at where we're going to be in a year's time. Okay, so so that aside, that that the, the deep cleaning, maintenance, safety inspections, that's something that Justin Ford from Breezeway mentioned, and I think it's it's a great one that this is a good time to just evaluate all your uh, all the safety aspects of a property. Are the fire extin- extinguishers up to date? Is it time that you change the um, the detectors? And, and checking other safety issues. I'll put a link to um, uh, Justin's uh, safety checklist because that's, you know, we need to have checklists at the moment so that we have something concrete to take out and say, okay, I'm going to be working on this. It's a, it's a great concentrator. So the other suggestions I'm going to make about what you can do with your downtime are really cost free you know their, their labor the, the costing of labor if if you are having to lay off staff then maybe it's you as the business owner that could be doing these things if you're able to keep your staff on then create something for them to do after the periods of cancellations is gone because i think you know over the next few weeks if this carries on Everybody will have been decided that they're cancelling or whether they're going to maintain their reservation and that will be an ongoing thing. But in general, don't expect to be awash with new reservations. We've actually closed down from here until about mid-May and we don't want people coming up to our uh, cottage country areas we feel that's a responsible action to take and in fact we don't have many bookings at this time of year but we're trying not to encourage people to leave the city and come and isolate themselves in some of these small communities where they have very limited medical facilities so i think it's irresponsible to just just bring the potential of infection up to these areas. That's my personal area. Judge me if you wish. Um, that's fine. I've actually, <laughs> something that's come out of all this is I used to be really afraid of being judged. You know, and I don't give a toss anymore. Judge me if you wish. I really don't mind. Okay, that aside. And, and maybe I'll get Phil to edit that bit out. But anyway, I'm going to give you some suggestions on what we're going to be doing. The first one is, if you haven't got one, is a standard operating procedures manual. Now, over the years, and we've been in business 18, 18 years now, we've, we've gone through a lot of different platforms and resources, and there's always somebody in the company who is good at doing this stuff. So Sandra is our office manager. She's a fabulous bookkeeper. She's been with us for... Oh, gosh, I think it's she'll, she'll probably correct me on this, but probably about 12 years now, maybe 13. And she is an amazing person, but she has some very specific skill set and bookkeeping is one of them. And the other is, you know, she, she has huge attention to detail, whereas I'm all the way up the top with my strategy and looking down. Sandra is... You know, she, she's deep down in the weeds and will always pick something up that I might have missed. So over the years, Sandra's been creating documents about our different processes. Now, I'm hoping that you all have these. I was talking to Jennifer Frankenstein Harris uh, from Great Ocean Condos in New Smyrna Beach a couple of weeks ago. And she was saying that her... Uh, in her company, they still have uh, print manuals 
an SO, print SOP manuals and every uh, one of her staff has one beside them on their desk. We're doing it, we, we've done ours on Google Drive. You know, Sandra creates all these different folders, how to manage our bits and pieces of our property management system, uh, how to deal with damage, how to do a refund and, and different items. And then some of our other staff are coming in with their particular uh, expertise. Caitlin is our marketing assistant and she does all the social media posts and the blog content, uh, blogs and website content. So her area is, you know, how to upload a blog post. If she wasn't here, could somebody else upload a blog post? Could somebody else create a Facebook post image on Canva? So the plan is, is that we're going to collect all these processes, all these standard operating procedures and put them in one place. So it's easily accessible by anybody at any time. So we are not going to do a print manual. We're going to take everything off Google Drive and we're going to put them into TouchStay. Now, if you've been listening to me over the past couple of months, you'll know that I am a huge proponent of Touch Day. I think it is the best thing ever. I love Touch Day. Not only for the fact that it's a digital guest guide, and we've been using it, I mean, we, we, we have now rolled out to all our 180 odd properties, our digital guest guide. But we've started using it for other purposes. And the second, I'm going to come in a few minutes to talk about our owner information manual. Um, so we're using it as, as a manual for our owners. But we're also going to be using it for our standard operating procedures manual. So it will be on everybody's phone. It'll be on their tablets. It'll be easily accessible at any point. Within, that, within this SOP, we're going to have all the checklists for evaluating a new property for our account managers. So they can go into a property and they will be able to, on their phone, just go straight into the SOP manual and pull up the checklist for property evaluation. For uh, another member of staff who perhaps um, is on duty and uh, our guest services manager is away, and they get a call from a guest saying they can't get into a property, there's a problem with the entry system, they can go straight into the SOP guide, which says exactly the sequence of things that they do to get, give them access to that property. So absolutely everything is going to be on the Touch Stay Standard Operating Procedures Manual. So over the course of the next couple of months, Every member of our staff is going to take their particular area of expertise and, and create SOPs for it. And we're going to you be using a uh, platform called Loom. And I don't know if you've come across Loom, but it is a simple method of creating a very, very short video or a longer video, if you like. And, and it records your screen. So... I'll take the example of Sandra um, teaching how to how to do a refund. So she will bring up our property management system into the particular area that she needs to demonstrate, and she talks through how to do a refund as she's going through the screen. I mean, you've all seen you've all seen these um, screen videos. But with Loom, anybody can do it. There's no setup. It's, I got mine up and running in, in less than a minute. And I did a couple of little run-throughs. And in fact, I, use, I used it to show my owners how to use their owner information manual on Touch Day and what was in it. So definitely go check out Loom. Um, it, is, it is terrific for creating all these standard operating procedures. So I predict that at the end of the COVID-19 debacle, we will have the most comprehensive standard operating procedures manual out there. So talking about the end of COVID-19, 
I believe that when we do come to the end of this, that direct booking is going to be something that we need to all focus on. We don't know how Airbnb, HomeAway, Booking.com are going to come out of this. And and we've already seen with some of the policies, I mean, I know everybody's been doing this on the fly, um, but some of the policies have certainly impacted many owners and managers. And I've seen evidence that there are a lot of people who want to move away from this OTA model and get into more direct booking practices. So in the past, we've had the direct booking days, book direct days, you know, all pioneered and moved forward by Amy Hynote from VRM Intel. And Amy has done a fabulous job of bringing people together to create these strategies, but just for one week or just one day of the year. And hopefully we carry on this into the future. But my belief is that, and and I will talk to Amy about this, that from here on, we need to start a monumental book direct campaign so that when we come out of this, we flood the market with why people should book direct. You know, if you've had a bad experience, now is the time to become more brand conscious, uh, find the brand that, you know, this is the education for guests, find the brand that you love for you, the area you want to go to and then book direct with them. But you, we can't just come out at the end of this and just say, okay, yes, I'm going to start booking direct from now on. The time is now to create the landing pages that you want. The time is now to create the guest education plan, to create all your branded messaging so that, I mean, we're not going to be doing this right now, but you're going to build this library of branded materials that you can then take out and offer to your audience to tell them why it's so important to book direct. So make that a project for somebody. You know, build a book, a direct booking strategy that we can start taking forward and we are going to be so powerful uh, collectively if we're all doing this at the end of this, this time. So that's something that we're, we're doing. So next is creating an owner acquisition plan. Um, in our business, we, uh, we take on new owners all the time, a lot of referrals from other owners. We do some uh, marketing, not a huge amount, and we generally rely on a big show that we go to in March, end of March, early April each year called the Cottage Life Show. And we've had a booth at the Cottage Life Show for the last 19 years, and People come to this show in Toronto because they either own a cottage, they're thinking of buying a cottage, or they just like the idea of going to our resort cottage country area in the summer. So uh, thousands and thousands of people come through the doors of the Cottage Life Show. And this is where we get the bulk of our guests, uh, the bulk of our uh, owners, property owners, who then give us their properties for, uh, for, re for rental. And we usually come away with somewhere between 50 and 100 leads. And a lot of those, we have the, because we have the opportunity to, to meet the owners and talk to them and spend a little bit of time uh, talking about our business and what we can do for them. And then, of course, we follow up afterwards. So, of course, the Cottage Life Show is cancelled this year. Uh, in fact, it was it would have been last weekend. So we are having to look at a new way of attracting owners. And I think at the end of this, um, because a lot of people are going to be in in financial situations 
that mean they've got to shut down a lot of things. And if they've got second homes that they're not making any income on, then they will be out there looking to create that income. So we want to be out there too saying, don't go through Airbnb and HomeAway or other platforms at the moment. Do not do it yourself. You need to come with a property management company that knows the business, that already has the marketing in place, that has hundreds of thousands of names on their mailing lists that they can share information on that property to. So all well and good talking like that, but we need to have a very structured plan in place to say, how are we going to do this? How are we going to say to people, bring your property to us, we're going to market it for you, and we're going to bring you income. At a time when everything's going to be in flux at the end of this and a lot of uncertainty around. So we want to make sure that we are ready to bring these owners on board. Now, I want to offer you a, a just a, a free presentation. Um, it's one that I did at a VRMA conference a number of years ago, and, and it's still just as relevant. So if you go to the show notes and uh, check out the, there's a, tra- there's a link to a training program called How to Attract New Owners and Keep Them, or something similar like that to that. But go to the show notes. You can download that complete hour-long training on owner acquisition. And, you know, I just love you to do that. That gives you a lot of ideas on how to create your owner acquisition plan. So I also want something I'm going to do personally is learn a new platform. I, I've, I've spent years thinking, oh gosh, I need to learn WordPress. I need to be able to manage my own website. Well, in fact, I, over the years, I've, I've picked up enough knowledge, which is probably completely dangerous. And, and as my business partner, Jason Beaton, will, tell, will, will say, yes, that is very dangerous. That little amount of information I have as he corrects all my errors. Um, but think about the platforms that you'd love to learn because now's the time you can do it instead of focusing on the news. You know, I'm, I'm that one that's been clicking on the GIS data every day to see how many new cases there are or has been on to any news channel to hear the latest epidemiologist tell us how awful it's going to be. Well, I'm switching all that off and I'm going to concentrate on learning a new platform. Now, my, my platform of choice is Canva. I do know how to use Canva, but I want to be able to get in there and create some great templates, uh, certainly for lead magnets. And I'll talk about um, lead magnets um, in a second. And because the lead lead magnets are the things that um, the owners and guests can download in exchange for their email address, which is what you want. But anyway, I'm going to be learning Canva and also ScreenFlow because I'm creating a lot of new training programs. You know, that's my downtime project is to create training programs and modules for new managers coming into this business because business will pick up. You know, people will still go on vacation and probably stay closer to home. So, you know, if if you're in a staycation area, you are going to be seeing an influx of, um, you know, it's going to be busier when this is done. So just on on that, uh, as I'm on that subject about doing training courses, um, for anybody who, who was mildly interested in the property management pro professional, uh, property management professional course, that we launched uh, just a few weeks ago, we did decide to close that down and to refund all the um, all the people who wanted to get onto the program. It was not fair to continue with that and to keep their money uh, at this time. So we will be relaunching in, well, we will be relaunching at some point 
in the future. Um, so I'm I'm creating a ton of training stuff at the moment. So that's why I need to use screen, learn ScreenFlow. So think about a new platform you'd like to learn and get out there, focus on one and become expert at it. Um, there was a post on the Facebook group by Jeremy Chase Clayton and he said for in-office staff, get them demoing different systems, different softwares, different CRMs, um, learning, you know, we should we use flat Slack or Freshdesk or Salesforce or Monday, etc. For those of you who are just starting to, the, to work from home, it's so important that you pick one or two platforms to, to that everybody can learn. And uh, as, a, as a small aside, my company has been working remotely for the past eight years. We have been working from home, all our staff from home. We do not have brick and mortar. And I am so pleased that, you know, it's been business as usual for us. All our staff work from home. We use Slack to communicate. Um, we use Asana to plan projects and to um, coordinate different tasks. And we use Zoom for meetings. And really, we stick with those three platforms, Slack, Zoom, and Asana. And, and that works re that's worked really, really well. So, I mean, Slack's only, we've only been using Slack for a couple of years. Or maybe it's only a year. But it is absolutely invaluable. And the other thing is it's, it's Slack and Zoom. Uh, in fact, all three platforms are free. So if you are a small company and you're just starting to work from home, then those are the three that I would recommend. Uh, okay, so that was that. Learn a new platform. Learn something new. So for our, um, for our marketing assistant, Caitlin, she is being tasked to write content. We were talking about building a new website before this happened. And we actually had one web company we wanted to use and that all fell through, which was very sad um, because we were so determined to go ahead with that one. But that's that's topic for another podcast probably. Um, but we're still wanting to create a new website. Um, don't have the money for it at the moment, but there will be at some point in the future. So, and while we still have, you know, an okay website, then Caitlin is going to be building content. She is going to be spending her time writing articles, researching, and of course, writing blog posts as well, not necessarily for publication now, but to create a blog post library that we can then take into the future. Also, I mentioned lead magnets. So, Caitlin will be creating some uh, some lead magnets. And if you're not sure what a lead magnet is, it is that thing that you download in exchange for your email address. And lead magnets nowadays have to be, it, they don't have to be long. They don't have to be 30, 40 pages. Definitely not. But they they can be short and succinct, but they have to be of huge value. Nobody's going to exchange their email address for something, or they may do because they don't know it's going to be bad value, but they're not going to stick with you, and they're certainly going to unsubscribe if what you give them is, is just a few lines of lesser value material. So, for example, one of our lead magnets, we've had it for a long time, and it's been very successful, has been a packing list for your vacation. Because, of course, packing list for vacation rental is different from if you were going to a hotel or uh, a resort. You know, we, we have what are the, what, what you need to take for the kitchen so that when you get somewhere, you're not, you know, you're not missing a herb or a spice that you want. Uh, this is particularly true of remote properties. You know, we've got some properties that are, 15 kilometers down a dirt track and then 20 minutes in a boat and nearly an hour and a half from the nearest grocery store. So nobody wants to be running out. So we've, we've had this packing list for, for years 
And one of Caitlin's tasks will be taking that packing list and updating it a bit and making it more user-friendly, making it a PDF that, uh, that is fillable. So it's a checklist and they can tick things off online. So uh, lead magnets for owners is something else she's going to be doing. You know, the, the, the 10 things that you need to have in your vacation rental, the how to stage a vacation rental. All these things that owners need to know, and these will go in our attraction package. So when somebody's looking around on the internet, looking for a property management company, they'll come across ours and they're going to see that we have this document about staging your property for success for successful vacation rentals. Now, they might may not be interested at all in renting with an agency which is fine. They can still download this, but we have their email address for it. So have a think about uh, a whole list of lead magnets that you could create. And that's, that's something that comes in under the content strategy project. Sharon uh, Michi from Cottages to Castles in Sanibel and Captiva um, has written a lot and contributed a huge amount on the um, on the Facebook group, so you know, definitely go over to the Facebook group and have a look because Sharon has really been sharing, and she's been sharing a couple of things that she's been doing. And you'll see the picture in the show notes of of something that she did for her guests. So she she said for our guests that have to can- have, have had to cancel their stays, we're we're mailing a Sanibel seashell hand-picked on the beach by yours truly, a Cottages to Castles koozie cup, along with a handwritten note reminding them that Sanibel will be here waiting for their return. That is a great touch. Somebody's getting something through the mail during all this, reminding them that they can come back at some point and enjoy their vacation. So go to the show notes. You'll see a picture of that. I uh, I stole it from, <laughs> from, from Sharon's Facebook post. But the other thing that Sharon had said as, a, as an example of something to do is to form a networking group with other property managers. So she says, if you're in an area that has more than one professional property management company, I encourage you to reach out and form a local VRMA group. We formed ours on Sanibel 16 years ago and have been sharing ideas, concerns, trends, and, and we welcome guest speakers to develop our skills and offer our guests a superior vacation experience. And I think that's a fantastic idea. I was saying to my business partner yesterday, we we need to get in touch with all the other property managers in our area and just share some experiences of what we're all going through at this moment. I mean, we don't really have secrets that we, we, and if we do, okay, don't talk about them. But in general, we all have common experiences and it's amazing how good it feels to talk to other people, you know, maybe in a Zoom conversation where you can see them as well. It's a bit better than a Facebook group and just just explore what people are doing. It's amazing how many ideas you can get and it's, you, you can, you just build this really supportive group and certainly in communities, um, the, this collective of, of property managers can make a difference in communities if you all decide that you're going to contribute to your community in some way. I think this is, you know, this is a great way forward in this time. So I, so I was going to mention my, our owner education. Um, we have created an owner education manual on Touch Day. Um, so it's yet another use of the Touch Day <laughs> touch day platform and uh, so our owner education consists of everything that we want our owners to know about how the business runs and about how the partnership works between them and us now you can go to touchday.com and you can you can get um our sample owner manual on there so Go to touchday.com and you can download and that's that's the manual that I've created because I've been working with Touchday to to build this owner education manual. So if this is something that you'd like to do, you know, certainly ours may not be 
uh, the the right one for you, but it gives you a good idea. And if it can spark some ideas, then I think it's really worthwhile for, for you to go and check that out. So finally, this will be all over, folks, at some point. So now's the time to create your post-COVID-19 advertising campaign. What are you going to do at the end of this? My friend Rick Oster of Oster Golf Houses put a post on the group about this. You know, think ahead. It's going to be over, folks. Let's plan for what we do when that actually happens. So you don't want to get to the point where China is at the moment, where they have no no new cases and suddenly go, oh, right, now we need to get new guests. What are we going to do? Well, that's crazy. You've had all this time beforehand to put your plans in place. So you don't know when it's going to end, so you probably don't want to have a seasonal campaign, but you want to do something that's that's general, um, maybe, as I just mentioned, create some lead magnets on your area. Again, we're using Touch Day. I keep mentioning this. You'd think I was an investor, which actually, in, in full transparency, I am. Um, but we've started to create a welcome guide for each of our areas. We've got nine different areas across Ontario, and they're all very different. And uh, I took this from Tyan Marsink from Missouri House, who has created um, a guide to Branson. She has some of the large, some large properties in Branson, Missouri, and she's created this guide to Branson on Touch Day. And uh, and I'll check with um, Tyan see if we can just include one of those in the show notes too, so you can you can get an idea of of how to do that. So that is great as part of a post C nineteen advertising campaign is to create the guide for your area. So you've got something ready to go out, something ready for your guests to jump on when finally they're thinking, I can now get out of the city. I can now travel. I can now resume my life. So have a think about that, what you're going to do for your your post C19 advertising campaign. Okay, I'm... I've probably talked enough now and I'm going to uh, to head on out of here. But before I do... It was, it was tough coming up with an idea for today's podcast. And I know that for every week coming, it's going to be even more of a challenge. So I'm putting this out to you. Could you please let me know what you want to hear? There's so many panels out there now. Everybody in the business seems to be out there promoting a, an hour-long panel you can go and listen to. You can listen to the experts. So that's one of the reasons I didn't want to do that. Would you like to be hearing from more property managers or owners? You know, somebody like Betsy Labarge or Sharon Mishi, do you want them to come on and talk about how they're managing their situation and how they plan to get ahead? I'm asking you this, and as I'm I'm asking you this, I'm thinking, yeah, that's a no-brainer. I think I should be doing that. Let's have a general discussion with with some of these people who who are really proactive and looking ahead with now in mind if you if you get that drift you know that they're, they're looking ahead and thinking about what they have to do now to make the future happen in a more positive way but if there's anything else you'd like to uh me me to to discuss or somebody you'd like to talk to or even if you'd like to come on the show let me know let me know i'm I just want to hear from you guys. So I I'll, I will be putting a poll out onto the Facebook group. So so check that out. Um you know, you can each week from here on I'm going to announce what I'm going to be doing because I'm not I am not batch recording for the next 6 weeks like I've done in the past because things change too things are changing too rapidly. So I'm planning on recording my podcast on a Sunday and Monday of each Sunday or Monday of each week and having it go out on the Wednesday. 
So it's going to be pretty up to date. So do that for me. Something else you can do, of course, is go to, if you've got a free moment, go to iTunes and give me a really nice review. I'd love that. And apart from that, stay safe, folks. Stay positive. And I'll be talking to you again soon. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.